Brooks is really, Phil, at this point, just a question of survival. You get a chance there to see how steep this climb is. He's looking, he's tilting his head to one side as if to look around the corner and see where is the summit of this climb. Please let it finish and please let the 20 minute or so descent down to the finish line come to me very quickly indeed. He turned professional last year for Barla World. He's never won a race as a pro, but he's offered an awful lot. He finished second in the Tour of Japan. That more or less got him his pro contract in 2006. 2,800 metres, 9,300 feet. Hinkapi is the next rider to go around the corner there. Hinkapi knows extremely well how to go downhill fast, and he will be dreaming about making the contact on the descent. This is Andy Schleck, and he's so steep. This is the 8% bit now as they lead up to the finish. They won't fight Cole for the points. Cadell Evans there grimacing, sitting on the wheel of Menchov. He's got a feel inside, so happy. This has gone so well for him. This has gone very well for uh, Cadell Evans this afternoon and Denny Menchov too. There they are over the summit of the climb. Andy Schleck taking a piece of newspaper on board there to put in front of his jersey, Phil. That is to stop the cold getting onto his chest on the descent. And Valverde is over at around about 15 seconds. Bernard Cole leading the descent now. This is a very difficult and dangerous descent and you have to be very careful. And in fact, uh, I think the yellow jersey needs to be very careful there because Cadell Evans is in front of him. Well, this is going to be, and Cadell Evans can descend a mountain, so this is going to be a very interesting race. He's a won and lost way down as well as the way up. It looks like they're, go, they're coming back up to John Lee here. He's going to feel so happy tonight. He's conquered the highest mountain of this year's Tour de France, the youngest man in the race. He'll be on the front pages of the newspapers tomorrow for that. Well, it looks like uh, Arroyo was coming back up there as well for Case de Pagne. Yaroslav Popovich has made the junction as well, so there's now five riders at the front of the race. So those five riders are going to be Cyril Dessel, uh, Sandy Kassar, David Arroyo, Yaroslav Popovich and John Lee Augustin. A little bit further back. Just having a look here, this looks as if it could be... Well, that's uh, that's this is this is this is John Lee Augustin, I think, who's gone off the edge of the road, and he. Uh, let's just have a look at this one more time. He's coming round that corner. He came into the corner much too fast, straight over the top of the climb, and he's onto the shale there. He's sliding down. They've stopped at the side of the road to see how he is. He seems to be okay, but he doesn't have a bike with him anymore. Well, that is very sad. Paul, he's gone off on the steepest part of the drop here. His bike has gone way down there. But being from on top of the world, winning the climb, he's, he must have just lost his eye on that corner. And has gone. he looks OK, amazingly, but he's getting back. Well, he's got to get himself back into this bike race here this afternoon, Phil. That really was unbelievable. And what happened, I think, was he was going into the corner just a little bit too quickly and he wasn't able to correct it and there's nothing he can do that. The problem is <laughs> the team cars are behind and his spare bike is behind and nobody's going to go down that mountain to go and get his bike. It, it can't. It's gone miles. It just kept on going and it's a very slippery slope that it was covered in snow until four weeks ago. So there's nothing there but dust and rock. Well, this is Kim Kirken and Alejandro Valverde trying to get themselves back into the yellow jersey group here this afternoon. Swapping turns on this part of the course now. This is, we said this was a technical descent, a dangerous descent. You've got to keep your wits about you. You have to have the experience and know just exactly how to handle corners like this. You have to judge your entry speed to absolute perfection. If not, you're going to go off the edge of the road, as we've just seen John, or John Lee Augustine do. I think what happened there was he'd been caught by the rides. He took his eye off the bend. He wasn't doing his own descent there. And when he realised it, he was already leaving the road. It was a very, very sad sight to see. There he is at the say. side of the road, still waiting. He's, He's going to wait do. and wait and wait. And that's the sad thing about having an incident like that, Phil, because the problem is the team cars are probably two minutes behind Especially him. Especially the Barlow World, because they've only got four riders left. They've only got one team car in the race, and they'll be way back. He could be there for ages. That's very, very sad for John Lee. 
but onward goes the race now this is the super fast descent riders trying to repair the damage here Kim Kirk and trying to get back up but chasing front, Valverde Valverde's going down this like a pinball he's absolutely on the edge of his seat here trying to get himself into contact with the yellow jersey group they are going down this mountain at approximately 90 kilometers an hour well it is an amazing stage of the Tour de France today first of all we get the youngest rider in the race go over the top first then we get the youngest rider in the race go off the side first and as far as we know he's still waiting at the roadside for a new bike nobody can go and get the old one back as these riders continue to race down towards the finish a minute 42 on the yellow jersey that is such bad luck, I have to say, Phil, for uh, John Lee Augustine. Here is the yellow jersey just sitting on the back of the group, and the man that leading the descent down there is Cadell Evans. And uh, just around the corner, you can see that somebody is taking some serious risks. Well, it's straight downhill into the outskirts of town here, and then straight across the river and a right-hand bend. Three kilometres to go. Sandy Kassar must be dreaming of the victory that he got in the Tour de France last year and wondering. He chased a victory in the Tour de France for many, many years, and here he's facing up to the possibility of a second one. Well, just look at the way these riders are lining up for the bend here. We're like It's like watching a motor race here as they break hard and then they try to go up on the inside of one another. 2.7 kilometres to go. There's the spread for you. A minute 42 across the board. Well, I tell you what, uh, these riders also know, Phil, that if they mess about in a situation like this and start to play the cat-and-mouse tactics and slow down, then George Hincapie's group will come back into contact, and they wouldn't want that because Hincapie would then be the strongest sprinter in the front of the race. Currently, I would have to say my money would go to Yaroslav Popovich, but you can never discount the man sitting on the back, and although he looks like he's been struggling, I'm absolutely certain that Sandy Kassar is itching to win this bike race this afternoon. He is, and that's why he's trying to hang on, and he might change his attitude if he can just get to see the finishing line here, but uh, the way they are going around, another tight bend, Kassar taking a little bit closer order there as he tries to hold on to the whip end, Cyril Dessel is the worker at the front, another one, it's a French sandwich at the moment, and they've got the other riders in between, the rider from Ukraine and the rider from Spain. Yeah, David Arroyo, this is a little bit further Here back now. Here comes George picking up Samuel Sanchez, isn't it? Or is it no, Kirken? This is Sammy Sanchez, and I would expect that to be Kirken. Or maybe it's, in fact, Sifsov who's been picked up by Sammy Sanchez, because Sifsov was in the group with Hincapi, and he got dropped. Well, they're still well spread out. Sylvester Smith here also trying to put matters to rights without his team leader. Now Damiano Kunigan, what under uh, make a tight bend here. Well, it's still Denny Menshov and Kip Kirkenfield back. trying to keep themselves in contact with the yellow jersey group. So they're losing a little bit of time here this afternoon. And strangely enough, as Cadell Evans almost predicted it, on the descent, which is becoming much more tactical than the uphill part of the course. There might be some losses amongst the leaders. Christian van der Velde and Menshov. I haven't seen Sastra either. But as we're starting to move at 1.3, that's opened it up with the leaders here now. And that is Popovich who's gone early. And it, uh, Kassar was straight onto him here. That one's not going to work. Popovich, I think, at one kilometre to go, is easing up again to tempt somebody else in front. It was a good move. It didn't work. It was a good move, but Sandy Kassar, as we'd said, was very observant. He was waiting for that move at one, one and a half kilometres to go. And now he's in first position. It's not the best position to be, I don't think, because I'll tell you what, it's a very nasty right-hander here's the move coming from David Arroyo on the left well that would be a surprise but he's gone for the inside Desel is now going after him Popovich still lively at the back holding on thinking Kassar will close the gap for him and Kassar takes it up Arroyo has made a real run for the finish here but uh, Cyril Desel and this is the way up toward the breaking horse Cyril Desel has got the lead and this could be a victory for France and it wasn't to be expected today but Cyril Desel breaks hard sees the finish now as he goes into the straight and now he's got a kick out of this there's still a chance for Popovich no Cyril Dessel has run away with this and he deserves it that is a huge result for one two for France Cyril Dessel and Sandy Kazar David Arroyo finishing third a good day in the office in the saddle for Yaroslav Popovich with George Hincapi rounding off the top five Bernard Cole may not win the Tour de France but he's certainly eyeing off the king of the mountain jersey he leads that competition by 25 points but it's the all-important overall standings, the general classification, which holds most interest. No change in the top three. Schleck, Cole and Evans finishing together today. Carlos Sastra is the big improver. Dennis Menchov is the big loser.